Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I wanna talk about how I prepared for my live coding interview portion of Launch School's assessment number one. Now, technically, this is the second assessment in Launch School, but it's the one for the first course. The basics, uh, fundamentals of backend engineering using JavaScript. Once you complete that course, which is the first in the curriculum, you then go into a separate part of the course, which is the evaluation. It's your assessment, and you have a two parts of the assessment, which uh, part one I covered in the other video uh, that I made a couple weeks ago. And basically, part one is the written test. It's a timed test portion of the curriculum. It's three hours, and there's a whole detailed guideline on how to study for that again which I cover in the other video but in this video we're going to talk about the assessment the interview portion of the assessment where you're actually jumping on with one of the TAs or the instructors and they're grading you live while you're coding live and it's you know super high pressure and they try to make it like a job interview so you know for most people this is the more intimidating part and that's why I want to get into a little bit about how I prepared for it so for this first assessment one thing I realized going into it was that there were a lot of people who went into this underprepared or felt like they were under prepared even if they pack. So right out of the gate, that told me that I should probably go into it feeling like I over-prepared. If anything, I wanna make sure I'm at least a little bit over the mark for what I think is enough preparation. Now, I also didn't want to just lollygag and spend you know weeks or months getting ready for this after I'd completed this first part of the course, but I did wanna give myself enough time. So basically how it looked for me is after I completed the written portion of the assessment, you then get a study guide for the interview portion. And I basically gave myself, uh, I think two to three weeks. Maybe for some people that's not a lot of time, but definitely I think after I've been studying the material and then studying for the written exam, that was enough for me to feel like I had done more than enough for preparation. It allowed me to schedule to get on one of the launch school tutoring sessions, and it allowed me to go through uh, all of some of the certain uh, sections of the practice problems in that section, which I'm gonna get into now. So for that section, there are a large list of practice problems. Introduction to backend engineering using JavaScript, the first course, I believe there's about one 120 practice problems. There's a number of different kinds, but some of the biggest, the, the main types of problems are just graded levels of problems la labeled easy, medium, and hard. Now for the easy level, there's about 60 of these problems. For the medium level, there's about 20 of them. And for the hard one, I believe there's about 10 to 20 hard problems. So my approach was to go back through all of the, or most of the easy problems. I would say at least two thirds. Uh, I might've been all of them. Then go through all the medium problems and then do a few uh, of the hard problems problems again. Now, this is after I'd already completed all the problems during my studying for the course. Initially, I went back at least 75% of the easy problems, at least about 45 of 60 problems. I might've done, you know, all 60 of them. And then the medium level problems were the ones that I really focused on. And the reason I did this is that in the study guide that they give you for the test, after you get through the first part of the curriculum, they basically tell you what level you should be at to schedule an interview for this assessment. They give you clear guidelines for the level that you should be at to definitely not schedule an interview and then the level you should be at to feel fairly confident that you're going to get through. Now, at no point do they tell you, you know, if you can do this, this, and this, you're definitely going to pass. They don't give you anything like that. They just tell you, hey, you definitely shouldn't take it if you're at this level. And if you're at this level, you're probably, you know, good enough to schedule an interview. That's all they give you. So they don't give you a lot and I'm not going to get into the specific level of problems or what they would approximate in another course in here. You'll have to figure that out on your own if you go through. I don't think that's public knowledge that they give out prior to someone going through the course. So I'm not going to give it out here. But needless to say, they give you very clear guidelines, which makes studying for this fairly straightforward. It's really just a time game and then a compression game, getting enough studying in a short enough period of time to make sure you're super fresh and you really can perform at the drop of a dime live uh, in an interview. So that's the next part of studying for this, which is live coding. You know, I think any course I've seen mentions that live coding really is a separate skill. So it's something you need to practice, you know, in addition, to and on top of what you're already doing just to get to the level of software engineering you need for the assessment. So one of the big things you can do is take the level of problems that you're likely to see on the interview and put on a timer, record yourself with some sort of screencasting software, go through the problem and pretend like you're talking to an interviewer, pretend like you're solving the problem exactly the way you would in an interview, make sure you're going through your whole problem solving process, make your talking through it. If you have any questions, make sure you're vocalizing those. And then simply once you finish it, you know, go back through, see 
see what you did and just make some quick notes about what you could do better, how you could verbalize better, how you could organize your thoughts better, et cetera. You wanna do this at least, I would say, three or four times prior to going in the interview at an absolute minimum. As you can probably guess, the more you can do this, the better. But what I would say is that given the guidelines they give you to study for this test, as long as you're hitting those guidelines for the level they tell you to be at prior to scheduling an interview, you're going through and recording yourself at least three to four times prior to the interview, I would say that, you know, you're not gonna have any problems uh, with passing at that point. You know, for anyone that's done this, you've already done all the introductory material, you've done the whole first curriculum, you've already gone through your first assessment and passed. So at this point, you should already have a good feel for you know the level of proficiency you need. Now it's really just a matter of getting ready specifically for the interview. And so I hope you guys really enjoyed this and got something out of it. You know, hopefully it's easing some of that angst you have if you are in launch school and you're getting ready for that first assessment. And if there's anything specific that you want me to go into more depth about, make sure to comment below letting me know if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and then make sure to slide your finger over and hit that subscribe button so that you're notified anytime that I come out with a video just like this. And as always, thank you for watching.